This morning at 0855 hours, 8.55 a.m., deputies responded to the Brockport High School for the report of a bomb threat. Uh, upon arrival, MCSO members met with uh, school district administration. Uh, upon meeting with them, the decision was made to request uh, uh, resources from the sheriff's office being the K-9 unit. Uh, we ended up sending out two dogs uh, two canine unit dogs uh, that were utilized to do a sweep. Uh, we also uh, mutual aid requested another dog through the Rochester Police Department. Um, the canine unit was utilized to sweep the building, which ultimately did not yield anything of suspicion. Uh, a decision was also made by the, the school district to um, uh, relocate the student to an undisclosed location. Uh, once again, upon doing the search with the canine units, it did not yield anything of suspicion and um, the school district made decision or allowed the school uh, students to return to the school and um, go about their day as planned. The um, The criminal investigation section of our agency is continuing with the investigation. Uh, they are following up with interviews and uh, following up on any leads that, are, that will be coming in or that have come in. Can you tell us the nature of the threat? About what type of threat was it that we heard? Uh, at this point, we're going to re release that it was a bomb threat and not uh, allow any other information out there about that. And there's a student who committed the threat? We don't know. It's under investigation at this time. We're following up on the leads and uh, with interviews. Frustrating to you guys or? I, I, at the end of the day, we're going to follow up with any calls that we have to respond to uh, when it comes down to the safety of the children and the safety of the community. We're, we're going to take everything seriously and we're going to thoroughly investigate it. And do you know anything about the threat that was made at Gates Child? I just a little, a few hours after this one, have you heard anything about that? No, ma'am. No. Is it strange, though, that it would happen in the same day? Does it lead you to believe there's any kind of connection with these threats at all? Or? That's a good question. That's a question I don't have an answer to at this time. Can you describe what the sweep is like with the canine? Uh, it's a big building. I mean, it must take a long time. And what is, that, what is it, the process? It's a very large building. We will deploy uh, the canines as needed and as many as that are needed to thoroughly clear the building. Uh, we will have a, a member from... Uh, that's familiar with the building, go with them as well and clear the building uh, accordingly. You check every room? Uh, how does that work when, once they're inside? Uh, they will clear to make sure that the building is safe. How long does it take you to clear the facility? Every building is different. It depends upon the size. So it depend if it's a smaller building, it's obviously going to go quicker. If it's a larger building, it's going to take uh, longer. Uh, charges if and when you uh, get a suspect? At this time, uh, it's still under, why don't we say, we'll, we'll wait and see when we get all the facts. It's also, it's often termed as a credible threat. What, what makes a threat credible? Uh, it, it depends upon the totality of the circumstances. You, you got to take all the information that you have uh, coupled with the entirety of the investigation to make, to make a, a, a good uh, decision on that. To be able to put it into words, I can't. Do you have the person in custody who made the threat? Are you interviewing them? At this point, there is nobody in custody. Okay. But you know who did it? We are still trying to do interviews. We, we're still working through interviews and taking leads as they come in. How are cell phones a part of the investigation in terms of how the threat is? I'm, I'm assuming, I don't know, that the threat was made by phone, but how, are, how is cell phone technology helpful in, in the investigation? Uh, I don't, I don't have an answer that specific to this incident. This takes a little more manpower than just sending in a couple of dogs to search the building, does it not? At the end of the day, we're going to put whatever manpower needs to be utilized to make sure that the investigation is thoroughly investigated. We're going to make sure that uh, the buildings are safe. And we're going to, if, you know, uh, whatever we need for manpower is what we're going to utilize for it. Does this put a strain on the department at all? We've got resources and we will use them wisely. We'll use what we need, where we need, when we need it. 
any idea how long it'll take to kind of come to more of a, when you'll release more information about what kind of threat it was or who it was or anything like that? How long does this process take? Uh, it depends upon a circumstance. When, when we have more information, we'll follow up until we have answers to what you have questions for. Uh, we can't answer what we don't have yet. When we have information, we'll release it to you. Now, you have determined this one this morning as credible or not credible? At, th at this time, we're still in preliminary phases. But it was credible enough to take, take the uh, initiative to take the, the students out to clear the building and things of that nature? The decision was made to request uh, the canine units and the decision was made for the school to be evacuated. Uh, we're going to thoroughly investigate anything, especially when it involves children, especially when it uh, comes to the safety of anybody in our community. How long did it take for uh, you guys to decide when, to when the students can go back to school? It's something that we work out collaboratively with the Brockport School District. Uh, we, we talk with them, we work with them, and they've been excellent with working with us. Uh, we, we have a great working relationship with them as we do all our school districts. Uh, what, whatever we need to do to help one another is what we're, we're here to do. They said they implemented an emergency plan. Can you tell us anything about that? What, no. What Any more questions, Ben? Just real quick, once, once this all came in, I mean, the school, how did they handle it this morning and contacting you? What was uh, relayed to your people? I would refer you to talk to the school district on that. What what role? I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead. ahead. Sir, go ahead. I was going to ask, what role did social media play in this event? Uh, I'm not aware of any role that social media has played at this point. Sir, you had another question? Well, I was just going to say, though, you said your call came in a little bit after 8 o'clock this morning. What nope. took place? 8.55 8 a.m. Oh, the call okay. came in. Uh, just about 9 o'clock. Yes, sir. So uh, what, what took place, what, what takes place on your end when that uh, call comes in? We respond and we conduct a preliminary investigation. We gather the facts as best we have is what we have uh, based off the 911 call. We find a reporting person. We talk to them and we try to gather intelligence and make good decisions based off the information that we have at hand at that time. We work collaboratively with the other agencies, uh, other agencies being um, the school district uh, and anybody else that may be particular to that type of call. Specifically on today's incident, we worked with the Brockport Central School District. We worked with uh, the Rochester Police Department who were once again nice enough to uh, assist us with our two canine dogs, giving us a, uh, a third dog to search uh, a very large building. Was it the school who called in the threat, or a one student, one parent, or the school? Information came from the school to us. And did Brockport police, were they called in on this? Or? Uh, it, it was in the town of Sweden. Oh, oh I see. Okay. Are there any more questions, Bill? Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.